Hi, this is Nathan Hart, and this is my Global Marketing Expansion Analysis Plan. Starting a business venture definitely has its difficulties, and uh, starting a foreign business venture increases that difficulty substantially. So we're going to be specifically looking at starting a truck tire business in one of two countries, either Turkey or Australia. These truck tires are primarily used for overland truck hauling uh, for the delivery of goods, and that could be in the region or throughout uh, the country. The reason why I chose Turkey and Australia, uh, there's a few reasons. I chose Turkey because of the geographical advantage of being uh, there at the confluence of the east and west, kind of north and south also. There's major shipping options uh, with the Bosphorus Strait and also over land uh, besides the sea option. They also have a heavy use of overland hauling uh, within that region using trucks. So there's a large market area uh, to promote truck tires. The reason why I chose Australia, the thing that pops in my mind immediately is the image of, image of the truck trains, the road trains that um, come to mind, the ones that traverse the outback, that travel over desolate roads and uninhabitable landscapes. Those are the two nations. Uh, Turkey's predominantly rural. It's in the eastern portion of uh, Turkey, but then it's in the western portion it's very metropolitan, very urban. Uh, Istanbul, some say, have has 20 million people living in that city. There are great distances, however, between the large urban areas and from west to east, and a lot of those roads are rough. For Australia, again, it's that great expanse of the outback. Much of the country is covered by desert, and the east is more metropolitan, more urban, and there are some places in the west also, but it's separated by a vast, wide open land. And again, there is the extensive use of the road trains or these truck trains, um, so the use of truck tires is quite common in Australia. So first we'll look at Turkey culture. Uh, the, the culture in Turkey is very diverse. Again, when you're going from west to east and Istanbul being uh, the meeting place of Europe and Asia, there's an amazing, diverse, multicultural uh, just a, a collection there in Turkey, and especially in the Istanbul region. Uh, Australia, or in Turkey, there is a very high uh, view of the we, not so much on the individual. So there is a large, strong desire to have harmony, conflict avoidance, uh, trust, so when building a business in Turkey, it's very important to be trustworthy and develop relationships. Uh, also be mindful of tradition and what the societal norms are. Uh, those things are very important in Turkey. For Australia, its culture is not far from what we are familiar with here in the states. Uh, it's a, it's a more individualistic culture. <clears throat> Excuse me. They take care of their own things. There is a, a sense of uh, self-reliance when it comes to work. You are hired, fired, and promoted based on your work, on the evidence of what you can do, and thus, whether it be in work or leisure, sport or school, there is a high value in winning. Australians, like Americans, like to demonstrate their pride in their, in their achievements. They do hold great respect for traditions, but Australia is not a, a terribly old country, and so their traditions are more modern and uh, have been established just in the last couple hundred years. For the economic indicators, when comparing Turkey, Australia, and the United States, there is, there's a difference with Turkey. It definitely has a uh, lower gross domestic product, but it is growing. It's a growing economic region, one that just in the last couple decades 
has seen tremendous growth. And surprisingly, uh, there is a, a relatively low unemployment rate uh, given the fact that it is an emerging economic nation. The U.S. dollar right now is, uh, has a high value because the lira is struggling. One reason is because of uh, Turkey's struggle, their continual drive to become part of the European Union. Uh, that would allow them to deal in euros, uh, but the lira itself is uh, not valued terribly high. And the interest rates, obviously, are, are high there in Turkey. For Australia, uh, the, the dollar value there is actually less, so the American dollar would not go far, as far, in Australia as compared to here in the States or definitely in Turkey. For both, the import and export uh, are down for both Turkey and Australia, at least as the 2013 reports. And surprisingly, for the United States, it was one of the only uh, countries that showed significant uh, Im upgrowth in or growth in imports and exports. Also, probably due to the really low interest rates, the economy is growing right now in, uni in the United States. For political and ins institutional indicators, uh, Turkey, Republican parliamentary democracy. Some of the things that are going on in the area, obviously, is it borders Syria, where there's a lot of instability. The eastern border of Turkey borders Syria. Uh, so there is a less stable environment there, and there's a just relating back to the, the mixture of east, west, north, and south, it's very complex and challenging uh, as far as this um, confluence of these different cultures and ideas and traditions coming together. Australia is a constitutional monarchy. It is actually in the top ten in government stability and has been for quite a while. Uh, the citizens do have a strong voice in government direction and they have made great strides in keeping uh, corruption at a minimum within the government. As far as the benefits and costs of foreign direct investment, Turkey has been for about a decade politically stable. Some would say that even now there, is, there are threats of corruption within the government but it is much improved from even just a decade ago. There is growth, again, uh, mentioning the fact that just in 2014, although minimal, but it was a 3% economic growth. But since 2002, the GDP has tripled, which is significant. Uh, part of this reason why there's been such a focus on it is, again, they are working hard to become part of the European Union, and a lot of uh, the the corporations as well as the government have been working hard to improve um, the economic outlook within Turkey. It is risky though. Um, there because of uh, a lot of the instability in the past and the neighbor neighboring nations that uh, are definitely struggling with civil war, there is a lot of risk. But there is a significant geographical advantage. For Australia, again, low government corruption, ranking high every year uh, for decades um, in that category. There's also a lot of flexibility in licensing, regulation, and uh, acquiring employment there. Um, they work well with outside foreign investors to make that as easy as possible. 40% of the workforce hold an advanced diploma or degree is significant, just uh, to mention that that is a, that's a good pool of people that you could get to work for uh, the company. And they consistently rank in the top ten for ease of doing business, for growth, innovation, talent, location, and business with other countries. The competitive forces that I found with Turkey and Australia, uh, most of the things line up similarly except for the rivalries where Turkey 
has, uh, there are a few Turkish tire companies, Petlas being one of them, uh, Brisa, Bridgestone, Sabanki being another, that are large corporations based in Turkey. They've, uh, well, some of those have conglomerated with others like Bridgestone uh, or other international tire companies to make uh, them very formidable uh, com competition. For Australia, surprisingly, are, there are actually few domestic tire producers. Most of Australia is saturated with cheaper tires from Asia, specifically Chinese tire manufacturers that have inundated uh, that market. There are also other foreign and domestic tire manufacturers in both locations. Uh, Bridgestone, Goodyear, for Australia, Bob Jane, and Tire Power, and West Farmers. Um, and then there's a Japanese newcomer, Sumitomo, which just arrived in 2011 and already has 30 dealerships established within Australia. For both, potential of new entrants, it's difficult. It's a difficult entry. The high cost of building a manufacturing place for developing new product, uh, acquiring land, hiring a lot of labor force as well as management and raw materials. Uh, the raw materials alone are an expensive cost. <clears throat> the, you need to find managers who have business know-how in running a, specifically in running a tire business. There are numer pro numerous products nowadays uh, with several SKUs. There's not just, it's not as simple as just buying a tire. There are so many different uh, types and uh, varieties available. Uh, it would be very difficult just to get into it. But it's possible. There's common technology. Tire technology has not changed so much in the last few decades that uh, makes it impossible to get to. So uh, there are actually 117 tire manufacturers worldwide, and uh, that is not a whole lot. For power of suppliers and customers, it's important to know that 62% of total natural rubber consumption is by the tire production industry. And then on top of that, the top 10 tire producers account for 95% of total tire production. That is a lot of the use of the natural rubber raw material resources. Truck tires, however, only make up about 20% of the tire market. And although that doesn't sound like a great uh, market to jump into, there is a large margin in truck tires. Uh, pricing is generally about 10 times the price of a traditional passenger tire. Um, so uh, there, there could be greater margin within that. The low used market for truck tires also helps. Uh, most truck tires are used until they are done. So there's a low used market for truck tires. And then the threat of substitutes. Uh, the largest threat for both Turkey and Australia is the cheap manufacturer. They're low quality tires, but they are cheap and they're made mostly in China. It's true for both Turkey and Australia. Um, some other potential substitutes would be the use of rail, uh, the use of shipping, and the use of air transport um, to deliver goods. But there's always going to be need for overland delivery of goods. When we talk about standardization versus localization, uh, within the tire business there is definitely a standard and I feel that uh, for the truck tire business in itself, the, the standardization is global as far as quality and even kind of the way that it's, uh, it looks and is built. But the marketing is where the localization needs to happen, whether it be Turkey or Australia. Uh, marketing must be localized. So here's the recommendation. Surprise, probably for, for many, is that uh, I'd go with Turkey. It definitely has the most risk, but I think it has the most potential upside. Uh, first off, the investment money goes further. Um, so a dollar in Turkey goes two and a half times farther 
than it does in the States and, and even more than it does in Australia. There's also this potential acceptance into the European Union, and if that would actually happen, having established a, a company, a corporation in Turkey could be really beneficial because becoming part of the European Union, um, I think, could only benefit you uh, having already established a company there. There's also a large population of manufacturing uh, labor as well as educated employees. One uh, particular place I found online told that there are several, there are, there are thousands of highly educated Turkish men and women who are looking to get into business and uh, be hired by up-and-coming companies. So there's a large population there. And I just can't get past the, street, the geographic uh, strategic importance of just where it's located. With the importing of the raw materials and the exporting of product, being along the Bosphorus Strait, being right there between Europe and Asia and right next to the Middle East, uh, could be highly beneficial um, to have a company just located in that area. For the Duguid Audit in Turkey, they are making great strides with human rights. In fact, in 1996, there was a United States conference, or a United Nations conference on human settlements. And what it did is it brought this visibility to the citizens of Turkey about poverty and discrimination, promotion and protection of human rights, um, that they realized that, they, that something needed to change and grow. And in fact, in 1999, when a huge earthquake hit Izmit, uh, killing over 17,000 people, the government, was, the government was exposed to its ineffectiveness. And corporations and citizens stood up and took charge to fill that void. And so that was kind of a beginning of a, of a consciousness of um, the need for CSR there in Turkey. It was also surprising to me that Australia does not have a stellar human rights reputation. Most of that comes from the handling of asylum seekers from other nations, especially from Asia, who are looking to seek asylum in Australia. Uh, and a lot of it comes also from their treatment of the indigenous Aboriginal peoples. For environmental impact, uh, this is really important when talking about putting in a manufacturing facility. Uh, Turkey has had um, just this incredible increase in air and water pollution because of their incredible increase in energy consumption, consumption since 1980. And amazingly, um, it, they are really working hard on using something else besides fossil fuels. So they have been putting great energy and great resources into the use of hydroelectric, wind, and geothermal power. And once again, major changes are being implemented, a lot because of the drive to be part of the European Union. I think if I were to start a company in Turkey, we'd work really hard to make sure that it was clean uh, with waste and with pollution in the manufacturing side. There are some other potential issues. Again, it cannot be ignored. The threat of political and civil unrest is high in that region. ISIS is right next door in Syria. There's, there is corruption and threat of corruption in the region. Um, there is also just this overhanging threat of the success or failure hanging on this European Union decision. So sustainability is really unknown. Um, it's a risk. This would be a risk. However, I believe that the opportunities are huge. The opportunities include much more than just economic. It's to give employment to... Uh, significant portion of citizens who need that. It would be the strive to, striving to, u, to use uh, clean energy and have safe disposal of waste. 
Um, and it would really provide an investment back into the Turkish community. So when developing a marketing plan, um, I, I thought of the product name Karadan Tire Company just because Karadan is a Turkish word for overland or over the land. And since this is a uh, for overland truck hauling, that's what the tires are for. It's, it's truck tires. We're not going to deal with passenger tires or anything else. We're going to specifically think of one thing, which is truck tires. Karadan Tire Company would be based in Turkey, um, hopefully near Izmit, which is at the end of a long bay which empties out into the Bosphorus, which empties out into the Mediterranean Sea, um, and from there shipping the product as well as importing in um, materials would be fairly easy. I mean, easy regard as far as uh, it would be better than being far inland. Also, Izmit is close in proximity to Istanbul, which being such a hub for um, not just culture and life, but also for markets, um, that would be important, I believe, to be close to Istanbul. Um, with the prices of the tires... To uh, to make a or to sell most truck tires are around three hundred. They start at about three hundred dollars. That would be for um, a lower priced tire, and that is seven hundred eighty eight Turkish lira. That's where it would begin. It would go on up from there. This might be the hardest part: is that we would be specifically promoting a high quality truck tire, not competing directly against the cheap Chinese uh, imports that are low quality. So there, it's really not the same product we're looking to sell to. Um, we're selling qual high quality is what we're basing it on. And from promotion, we would use locally trained and hired representatives, sales representatives, to visit dealerships. We're not selling these to the public, so it doesn't need to be television and things like that. We're talking mainly uh, nicely developed, printed, and web material that can be distributed to local dealers to know about this high-quality tire. The representatives I chose to have that because of the relationship aspect of the Turkish culture, having someone that they could trust, having uh, trained sales representatives who know how to develop good relationships with these uh, dealers, with these owners of the dealers in order to um, sell.